this is the roadmap 2023 for curl right and uh, now with slides this is me wolf ssl get in contact if you need support so what we want to do in 2023 with the curl um the main stuff that we want to I want to because I mostly plan my own work here because we're not that many people are actually working on curl full time. I get into that a little bit, but it's mostly me. So this is the plan that I, the stuff that I want to work on and that I want us to work on uh, this year. WebSockets, HP3, Hyper, and they're all experimental today. I want to remove the experimental label. I want to get into HPS records and ECH, and I'll explain in a few minutes exactly what they are. Parallel tests to parallelize the test suite to make sure that we can run all the tests better and faster um, going forward. So um, yeah, some of those uh, uh, these items actually existed in my roadmap presentation from last year. So as you can see, we don't always get around to actually complete all the stuff that's in the ro roadmap. So uh, maybe this year, maybe not. It depends on what happens a little bit, right? And what all of you want, because I want to work on what everyone wants and not just speculatively add stuff that maybe nobody wants. So if you have use cases, ideas of what the specific things should be used for, talk to us and, and um, we might adjust, we might be able to adjust the roadmap and go with one direction instead of another and so on. Um, I usually then try to ask users every year in the annual survey, user survey. Uh, we talk, uh, ask users what protocol they use, what features they use, what they don't want to use and so on to get a sense of the, the general feeling for the different things and, and how to move forward. But it's hard. So, you know, it's open source. I know very few of the many users out there. So if you have any specific needs, uh, talk to us directly. So WebSockets has been one of these features that been, that was asked for for a very long time until we started working on WebSockets last year. And where I finally or pretty much decided that instead of working out and, and doing a lot of um, forcing users to re-implement these things that so many users want to do and you know a lot of different use cases and users and use cases they have glued on uh, different solutions on top of libcurl with their own custom solutions with their own weird libraries or maybe not weird but separate different libraries to to do this so now instead we've moved that code move that kind of code into libcurl to, to provide, a, provide a more well uniform <laughs> library for, for doing transfers, including WebSockets. And we have, a f I've got reports from, from a bunch of users who found issues, reported back and confirmed our improvements, of course. So it has gotten a, a certain amount of testing and it seems to move forward. I want to get to know even more people who have used it. And, and if you I can get your thumbs up or thumbs down or suggestions, what's, what's next and, and so on. So hopefully we can remove the experimental label from WebSockets this year i i really want to do that and uh, i want to just mention that the, the websocket support is hp http one only for now i i also want to get feedback from anyone who is actually interested in getting a, a web sockets over anything else than http one i get a sense that very few people actually do that so i haven't bothered to to even try to do that so my sense is most people who do websockets still do that on http1 and there's this web transport thing that is coming that might completely supersede and replace um, websockets in the future but that's quick based on http3 so it's pr sort of a big step uh, technology wise so i my feeling is most people are on h1 if you agree uh, um, or disagree tell me about it and I really hope that uh, we can go forward with HTTP 3 and make it not experimental uh, this year. Hopefully already in the first half, of course, uh, because it's still experimental. It has a rising use. This is still, I, I can sense a rising um, desire for people to actually try to use it, in particular for testing, probing, working with all those uh, newly deployed and, and used HTTP 3 servers that are getting quite common out there. So maybe, maybe this year. And I think there's a good chance for that. 
what what is sort of making it a little is, is making it a little complicated is this back end situation here because we are using third party libraries for for the quicken http3 uh, stuff and uh, there are of different levels of maturity none of those three different backends that we support are actually release level <laughs> uh, libraries so ngtcp2 being the one that is i would say is closest to uh, production level is still only in a zero dot release and they call that a beta themselves so i hope that they will go um, release a sort of real version and then i think we can do that as well i think stefan ising is uh, driving a lot of that development uh, he's, he's been working on that a lot the last few months uh, i'm mostly cheerleading <coughs> hyper is work we started uh, well several years ago now it's still experimental this is an alternative http1 and http2 backend so that you could can use this library instead of a chunk of built-in c code uh, and is it, it is sort of driven by this <coughs> interest in in, uh, in more memory safe solutions pretty much so it, we're almost there we just have i think we're down to maybe 12 test cases or so that needs to be adjusted to get everything through with hyper instead of the native built-in code so i really hope we can go there in 2023 so it could really become the the first year of some real use of rust backends in libcurl there's also uh, Russell's for TLS and there's Kish for Quick and H3 and all three of those are still experimental in curl so no wide use of those but it would be great to drive them over the edge and, and, and remove the experimental tags from them I want us to start looking at and maybe get somewhere in implementing support for the HTTPS DNS record and in particular this provides hints for HTTP 3 use for servers so that we would know earlier and better if we uh, are expected to be able to talk HTTP 3 to a server. Pretty much this might replace or enhance the old servers uh, thing. Old service head, the old service header is sort of going away. It's not being appreciated by the, by the big uh, CDNs and server providers out there. So, uh, it's going to be replaced at some point and this is one of the ways that uh, is coming up as a as one of the building blocks to replace the old service header so this is a header that provides data additional data for uh, also for the ECH functionality so ECH that's the uh, uh, that's the next slide uh, but yes in supporting HPS DNS records introduces some fun in, in quotes again the architectural challenges because we need to get new DNS records and parse them and that's uh, not possible to do with a plain POSIX uh, um, you know name resolver APIs so we need a different name resolver and uh, it's just going to add some uh, new in, uh, architectural uh, things but no, nothing, nothing it's not rocket science it's just code so i want to work on i want to get us uh, maybe a steps forward uh, a few steps forward in the encrypted client hello uh, side of things and uh, encrypted client hello is basically a way to avoid sending the, the the target host name in clear text in tls you know pretty much everything is going encrypted these days so we do hps almost all the time or encrypted versions of different protocols but with tls we still send the target host name in the clear in in the tls handshake in the sni field and this is a way to get around that and start encrypting that part too to also hide who you want to talk to in the remote end it needs uh, then the HTTPS record for keying and uh, also needs support in tls library so it's not it's not that easy to implement but i i still want us to go there and i hear from other networking oriented people that others are looking in going there so we i think we might see ech use and deployments uh, coming up yeah 
maybe this year, at least soon. And I think it would be cool for us to be there when it happens. We want to enable parallel tests. And this is something that just started a, a project we already fund in the curl project. Um, so this basically, it's a way to run multiple tests in parallel instead of serially. Right now, we run we have almost 1600 test cases and we run all of them one by one in a serial run test case one, two, three, four, five. And the, that's not optimal in any way. Even on a single core CPU, it's a really uh, inefficient. So by basically firing up more servers and running more things in parallel, we hope to be able to run all those test cases I mean, in the best case, when everything is fine, uh, much, much faster, maybe 10 times faster, maybe even more than that, just because it'll be uh, spread out on many more processes. So all the all the waiting will have less impact. Dan Fandish is uh, is the one is the captain captain of that boat, a uh, long time contributor um, is worked a lot on test cases before. Uh, so, yes, and of course, those are the six major things that I want to work on, us to work on. Uh, uh, but we are also, of course, going to, you know, handle whatever curveballs that are coming through, through the, over the year because we get a lot of PRs and, and change requests and everything from the community. We get new suggestions weekly that we just adapt to. Sometimes we get really, really great response. Uh, proposals and patches and then we go in, in with those so I mentioned what I want to see there's a whole world out there that will bring other things for us to chew on and, and go with so I'm absolutely certain that we will get a lot of great new stuff from people uh, about things that I haven't thought about at all but that will be great additions to curl uh, and of course, we also want to adapt to however the network community and others are changing. So, you know, when when the IETF comes up with new ways to do things, we want to follow along to do that as well, because we want CURL to remain relevant, important, good, and, and a trusted choice to do internet transfers. So we adapt to what we need to adapt to. So, yeah. Uh, and then in 2023, we are also going to remove a few things just because uh, some things just go out of time, out of style, it gets less users. NSS, the TLS library, is hardly used by anyone uh, anymore. It's also a little bit of an uh, odd child in the family. So we hope that by removing NSS support, it's going to be... Uh, I mean, less edge cases, less code, maybe a little more, more sort of uh, developer relief because we have a lot of TLS backends and reducing and removing some of the worst cases, uh, sorry, not worst cases, but maybe the special cases, it makes everything better. We've discussed removing GS kit, which I'm not sure we've actually quite agreed to doing that yet, but uh, we might. GSKit being a TLS library as well, but with very limited um, target host support. So it's pretty much only for a, f a few, a subset of platforms, mostly uh, the OS 400 called IBM I these days. Well, that's a, a platform where it's pretty much the only choice. And we want to uh, remove support for building curl with the Ming W. Well, Ming, well, how do you pronounce it? Ming W version one is wrongly spelled on this slide, but I mean, that's the original legacy Ming version. It shouldn't be used anymore. We want to drop it because it's a bit of a pain to support. We need a lot of workarounds to make sure that still uh, that curl still builds with it. So if you want to build curl with the Ming W um, compiler set, use the more modern MSYS2 which really everyone does since it's been around for years already. And what else? Bring it to us. Um, there's others to, other stuff to deprecate in 2024, but I removed it from this slide because that's not this year. And I think this is almost what I wanted to say. Yes, it was. Uh, this is 
the condensed version of the roadmap 2023 what i want to work on this year as you can see that's not maybe a whole lot but we're also not a whole lot of developers here this is mostly mostly me and stefan and dan that, that i mentioned for h3 and and the test testing so um any questions so fire them off Um, so we don't have any questions queued up right now, so we'll, we'll give it a second for people to submit their questions. But also a reminder, if you prefer to ask your question verbally, uh, you can click on the raise hand button and uh, we'll unmute you. Yeah, I'm sorry for the <laughs> mistake with the slides. It was silly, but thanks. Well, thank you, Frank. I don't think that's a question, but yes, <laughs> Curl is omnipresent. Yeah, there, there is some background noise because I'm sitting here in my home and uh, <laughs> I have a rather loud sun in my door, in my next room, room, next door room over in that direction. But